guys welcome back to my channel so today i've got a super fun video for you guys because i've made a punch needle pillow and i'm very excited about it because i think the result is absolutely amazing i've made a boho inspired pillow with lovely earth tones and a lot of texture and shagginess to it so let's dive right in So for this project I actually use three different kinds of punch needles. I use the Oxford punch needles which are absolutely the best punch needles out there, the best quality, the most comfort. Because I'm using uh, thicker and thinner yarns I needed different sizes. So this is the uh, regular size needle uh, which is for chunky yarns and I used a size 10 which says something about the length of the needle and uh, therefore the length of the loops you're going to create and this one is a fine punch needle so this one is for thinner yarns and I used a size 8 which makes a little bit longer loops and then I've got the adjustable punch needle this is an older version in my shop you'll find uh, a different uh, looking one but it's it functions exactly the same so I needed this one as well because I can set this one to a very long setting this way I can make super long loops which uh, gives you that really chunky texture that I was after so for this project I use natural materials so actually I always work with nat natural materials and I really try to find eco-friendly and animal-friendly yarns. So what I'm using is a cotton silk blend and I've got this beautiful wool, multicolored wool yarn from Manasa Uruguay and some other wool. I've put together a palette of lovely earth tones but I felt like it needed a little bit of a pop of color and so that's why I also added the blue. It gives it a nice balance in the end. What you also need is some kind of frame. I used a snap frame. I really love using them because they are super easy and you can put the fabric in super easy and you can also take it out and reuse it again and again. And I used a monk's cloth which is a very suitable fabric for punch needle. I put tape around it because uh, monk's cloth frays really easily and in this way you prevent it from unraveling. Besides these supplies you also need scissors, you need some kind of sewing material like a sewing machine or maybe just a needle and thread and you need a backing cloth and I'm also using something to finish the back of the punch needle piece. So I get a lot of questions about whether you can just pull out the loops and what's happening on the back and how can I secure it. I'm going to show you one way that you can secure the back and for that I'm using a special adhesive fabric that you can iron on. It's called plak vlies in Dutch but I'm not sure <laughs> what it's called in English. So um, let's go ahead and start punching. I prepare my snap frame by taking off all the bars. I slide them off rather than pulling because otherwise you might stretch them too much. The monk's cloth goes over it and then I push the bars back on. It can be a bit tricky, you have to push quite hard. Once you've pushed all four bars on, you can rotate them to make sure that the fabric becomes really taut. It should be tight as a drum. I recently started working on Procreate and it's a really nice app to make a sketch before you start punching. I've made a photo of yarns I'm using and I'm trying to get the right color so that I can see the combination of colors in my sketch and which colors I would like to put beside each other. Then it's time to make my sketch. I'm going to make a very freeform design with just some patches of color on both sides of the pillow with a stream of white in the middle. I 
I've drawn out a square in the size I want my pillow to be and now I'm going to copy the pattern uh, by hand so I'm just eyeballing it because it's a freeform design that shouldn't be a problem. I'm happy with the balance in the piece. I'm starting with my first area and I'm going to outline the area first with smaller stitches than the rest of the area and I do this to really define the edges. As you can see, punch needle is really simple. It's a repetitive motion, but there are a few rules that you really have to obey. First, you have to always punch the needle fully until you can go any further. Secondly, you have to make sure that your yarn always has slack. So the yarn moves through the needle and if you lean on it or your ball isn't unwinded enough, then it will definitely go wrong and you will start pulling out stitches. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm making sure there is enough yarn to go through the needle. Then you have to turn your needle in the direction that you are going. So I'm turning now and I'm going to turn my needle with it. It's very easy, but you just have to do it. And of course, be sure to not stab yourself. The punch needle has a very sharp tip. And when you punch, you put on pressure. And if your hands under there or your table, you will definitely stab it. So lift up your frame or your hoop and make sure you are careful. I've now finished my first outline and I'm going to start uh, my second row and I'm going to go round and round until I reach the middle. The rest of the stitches are going to be slightly longer than the first row. So I've now punched uh, the first two areas. I've used the multicolored yarn and it got these lovely loops. And I'm thinking about tufting it, but I will do that when I finish the entire project. So I'm now going on with the area over there and I'm also going to be using my multicolored yarn. Uh, I've caked this yarn and I'm not going to use this tail, but I'm going to use the tail in the middle because I can easily pull the yarn and the cake just sits and doesn't roll anywhere. So that's a little trick to make life easier. For this part, I'm using my adjustable punch needle and I've set it to the highest setting. So over here on the end and I'm clicking it in. So now I've got this huge needle, which will make me the long loops that I want. I'm using a weaving needle to thread this punch needle with and I'm doing it like so, pushing in the needle from the back, pull the yarn all the way and also through the hole at the tip of the needle. Super easy. Rather than starting at the edge of my project, I'm starting a little bit in because I don't want my tail to be at the edge. Once again, I'm going to outline the entire area and I'm going to go round and round until I reach the middle.
ah, this is a good example of something going wrong sometimes. So as you can see, I was pulling out stitches and that's because a knot had formed in my yarn, preventing my yarn to slide through the needle. So I'm taking out the knot, but if you are unable to take out the knot, then you could also just cut it. So cut the yarn right there, cut off the knot and then thread the needle again. But in my case, I could take it out and I can just pull on the yarn until I reach the tip of the needle again and start over. So I've now punched some of it and what you can see is I've left some space in between the rows. That's because the yarn is chunky and I'm making super long loops. And these long chunky loops take up quite some space. So that's why you don't have to fill the entire area. And there you go, some texture goodness. I cut off tails at the back and I do that at the height of the loops and the tail will just disappear in between them. Just look at that gorgeous texture. On to the next area and for that one I'm using thinner yarn. So that's why I'm using a different punch needle again, the Oxford Fine. The Oxford needles are really easy to thread. You push the yarn through the ring in the back and then through the hole at the tip. Pull the yarn until it goes in the channel and that's it. I'm using a size 8 needle which gives slightly longer loops than the size 10 needles. And I'm going to punch my next area in the way that I did the others. Here you can clearly see the height difference in the project. So with the different needles, you get different heights of loops. I'm super happy with the result guys. It's so textured, the colors are great together and I love it. So now for the details. So if you want your piece to look super clean, then you can go around all the edges of the different areas and make sure that the loops are going in the right direction. Sometimes they are tangled a bit 
or um, they are facing the wrong way and this way you can define your edges even more. To be honest, I actually really enjoy doing this. So now for the tufting. What I decided to do was give the large loops of the multicolored yarn a tufty look. So that means I'm going to cut every loop in the middle at the top and then you're going to get this really cute tufted texture. I know there are better ways to do this, but it's simple and easy. get a lot of questions about how I finish the back. Will the loops just come loose? Can I just pull them out? But as you can see, those loops won't just come loose. You can easily make a pillow like this. But I will show you a simple way to secure the back right now. First, I'm going to cut all the tails that I've left behind. And now I'm going to use this adhesive fabric. It has a sticky side and that's the side I'm going to put on the back. So you can see the glimmer or shininess and that's the side I'm going to put on the yarn. And then I'm going to make sure that it's straight on all sides and then I'm going to use my linen. This linen is going to be the back of my pillow and it can stand a lot of heat. So I'm going to put that in between the iron and the adhesive fabric, make sure that everything is straight and then start ironing. This can take a little bit of time. You can see here that it's not sticking that well yet. So I'm going to keep my iron steady on this place. On and as you can see now it's sticking to the stitches and this will prevent them from coming out. And now for the final step we're going to sew it all together. So we're going to put the front, the loopy side up and then the linen backing fabric over it. I'm going to use some pins to put it all together. Now I'm going to sew all around the edge and it's going to be a little bit tricky because there are loops and they are sticking out. But if you leave a little gap in between, then it should be fine. I'm by no means a sewing expert. So if you want to know exactly how to make beautiful pillows with envelope opening or with zippers, then, then I really recommend watching tutorials on sewing because sewing is not my favorite thing to do. We're almost done. I'm cutting off the excess fabric and then I'm going to turn it inside out and we're going to see the result. I've left a gap and that's where I can push in the pillow insert and I'll close that with needle and thread. So guys, that was it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did and I'm really happy with my new pillow. 
Um, so if you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I make all kinds of videos about fiber art and lovely projects like this. So please subscribe, it's free. So don't hesitate, just do it. Click the button and the bell as well if you want notifications. I'll see you next time. Bye.